What's up guys, Eddie here, and today we're gonna be talking about timing a muzzle brake. So, what is a muzzle brake? A muzzle brake is something that goes on the end of your gun to divert the, to divert the blast from your muzzle off to the sides to piss off your shooting buddies, your friends, your family, basically anybody around you. So, this way, your gun will have a lighter felt recoil for you. this muzzle brake right here I'll be rolling in clips of me timing it and to time your muzzle brake the first thing you're going to want to do is know how your muzzle brake is supposed to be oriented so this is the AAC 51 tooth blackout flash hider muzzle brake thing and it has no up it has no down so it can basically be placed anywhere as long as the side vent guys you can see me sticking my finger through them are towards the sides so what that meant was I just basically took this muzzle brake on and I screwed it on completely, as you guys see right here. And it was off by basically a quarter and an eighth of an inch. So three eighths of an inch. That was how much it was off by. So what I had to do is find the correct amount of shims, put them on there, and tighten it up. So what I like to do is I, I basically just did the guess and check method because I didn't really know how to math it out. Because I didn't really want to know how to math it out. And I thought guess and check would have been just as fast. So what I did is I just put on a random combination of shims, as you guys will see. And I was just basically seeing where it would place the muzzle brake. So when I time my muzzle brakes, I like to get it hand tight to the point where it's only in, in between an eighth and a sixteenth of an inch off. So when it's hand tight and it's that close, I then take a wrench. This guy right here to do the rest of the tightening to get it timed perfectly. So the reason why I don't like it having it hand tight and all the way on on there because when you're shooting it, this guy's gonna be taking a lot of abuse. And if it's only hand tight, it's gonna slowly work it work itself loose, and pretty soon you'll just be missing a flash rider when you're running and gunning, and you're gonna damage those threads, and you're gonna have to recut your barrel, and then you're gonna have to get a new gun, and you're gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of heartache. So when you time your barrel, when you install your muzzle brake, just make sure you get it right the first time. Uh, like I said earlier, I like to get it hand tight to the point where it's an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch off, more towards an eighth of an inch. And then I take this wrench guy, and I clamp it down, and I just tighten it up the rest of the way. So, in timing a muzzle brake, installing a muzzle brake is really quite simple. The method I just showed you guys, the method I just explained, is the shims method. There are other methods out there. They're a lot more difficult. They're a lot more iffy. I know another method is if you want the most perfect time the muzzle brake is, you can have it on there, and then you can pin, and then, or you can just weld it. And to be honest, that seems like a little bit more of a commitment than I want to do for my guns. I mean, if this works itself loose, I'll just put this gun in the back of my car and it fix it up some other day. I really don't want to weld this onto the barrel because once there's, there's a lot of implications that happens with metal and the metallurgy when it becomes extremely hot, such as when you're welding it. And I just don't really want to deal with that in terms of my sapper rifle, my semi-automatic precision rifle. And yeah, muzzle brakes fully installed. Took about five seconds. Well, it took a lot more time because I had to guess and check, but I tried out, I tried out like a total of seven or eight different shim combinations. If you are doing this and you have a manual and you have a thicknesses of what each shims are, you can math it out a little bit and you can figure out how much you need to put on there for the desired outlook that you're looking for. Or you can guess and check like what I did. So that's it for this video, guys. Time your muzzle brake, really quite simple, really quite easy. And the reason why I didn't do this at first when I built my AR 10 is because I didn't have a wrench set. So you guys can see right here, new wrenches. These are all in inches because the metric one was slightly more expensive and they're pretty close enough. But I am gonna buy the metric one, metric set later. So that's it for this video guys, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you go down there, leave a like, comment, subscribe, start talking shit to your friends about this video. If they don't know how to, how to time their muzzle brakes or if they're, if they're the dude that's rocking a muzzle brake and it's blowing shit up and down, uh, yeah, shoot them this video, and I'll be talking about in a future video about muzzle brakes versus flash hiders. I don't think you should run a muzzle brake on a lot of your guns, only on specific guns with a specific purpose, such as this one. This is my AR-10 Sapper. Hopefully when I'm shooting this, 
I won't have that many people close by to me because if you're in a team of people or if you're going to be shooting this indoors, you really don't want to have a muzzle break quite simply because that's a dick move to do. That's a, You're kind of acting like an asshole because you want to lighten your recoil and piss off all of your friends. I mean, that's if you're on an AR-15 and AR-10, AR but granted, you know, if you're shooting a 330 at Lapua, if you're shooting a 50 BMG, you should just tell them to get the fuck out because you got a hell of money. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys later.